All right, let's talk about Malik Neighbors, the wide receiver who, listen, uh, pretty much everyone likes Malik Neighbors. In fact, pretty much everybody loves him as a prospect, and we'll get into exactly why. But there are some people who like him even one step more. There's people who say that, you know, yes, Marvin Harris Jr. is getting the generational talent tag, but there are some people who have Neighbors as number one. At the very least, it's been in discussion, so I wanted to kind of give my thoughts on, is there a reasonable, you know, I'm a big fan of Marvin Harrison Jr., but is there a challenger for the number one wide receiver uh, taken? Well, let's talk about what he can do well. So, uh, first, let's start off with this play. So, it's going to be a, a, a blitz that the defense uh, for Grambling is going to be running here. That is where Neighbors is on this play. So, he's in the slot, and there's, uh, you know, the player on that side of the field is blitzing. So, it's going to be a safety who is going to pick up neighbors on this one watch as when the quarterback takes the snap you see neighbors at first you know uh definitely doing a bit of a not giving away what he's doing right in fact he's kind of essentially just walking out there right now uh trying to do make sure he doesn't quite give away what he's what route he's gonna run but the second he cuts he cuts very well gets way past the defensive player trying to cover him so is now in open space but, you know, that's fine, good, whatever. This is the real part of the play that I wanted to show. Watch what he's going to do from this point forward. Watch him wall out a top speed cut, get around the safety, and even runs through another player before finally getting brought down. It's that ability to move wall out a top speed that I find so impressive. And really, I don't think anyone in this draft class moves quite like neighbors. Granted, I haven't evaluated everybody yet, but the people that I've evaluated, no one moves quite like him, and that's any position. And a play like this is really where that can come in handy, where what's going to happen is it's going to be a, it's a one-on-one matchup. It's a blitz, but this time the player who's lined up against him is going to be covering him. So for neighbors, he's just running a go route. Again, this is kind of the pure one-on-one matchups you like to look at, right? Of if you can win in these situations in college, you're more likely to win in these situations in the NFL. And if you can win in these situations in the NFL, that just does so much for an offense. When this play begins, watch how he's going to you know, uh, get around the defensive player covering him. And immediately, there is separation. You know, usually at this point... When the quarterback has to make their decision, usually it's, hey, this is 50-50, let me throw it up and hopefully, you know, trust my receiver can win. This isn't that. This is, hey, neighbors is open, let me throw it to my open wide receiver. That's what's going to happen here. As you see, this is, uh, you know, uh, not a well-thrown ball down the field. It's incomplete, but, I mean, neighbors is wide open. Again, he can only control, control what he can control. So, well, you know, for the most part, I would say that having a, you know, a uh, very talented quarterback helped the neighbors on this play not so much. But even stuff like this is just really impressive, where it's going to be a route where, so you see, simple stuff, right? Just kind of underneath here. It's on third and 10, so you don't expect a lot from a route like this. Watch as one this play begins. You're going to see that, you know, okay, uh, again, kind of not not uh, too difficult of a route, but hey, you get the catch, you get some yards here, which, you know, on the outside of field goal range, maybe you could try a long field goal here, although college kickers are not NFL kickers, so who knows, but this play is not over, and what Neighbors is doing, despite the fact that his back is turned away from the back of the field, he, you know, he, he makes the catch, and he kind of realizes, well, I'm running towards the bottom of the screen, the player covering me, probably also doing that. So without looking, he immediately cuts towards the top of the screen. That allows him to pick up the first down. Kind of runs behind it, but you know is able to break a tackle, gets the first down, and is able to extend the drive. So really good stuff there once again from neighbors. That's not just his athleticism. Well, it is his athleticism. It's having a good feel for the game, and that's definitely something that I noticed when watching him play. Is he really does seem to have a good feel for the game. And also going over here, I mean, he's just so explosive. <laughs> like stuff like this, so it's simple play. You know, he's going to be just in motion towards the bottom of the screen. Nothing crazy. Daniels is going to take the snap, runs a play action, flips it to neighbors who right here, again, simple. Uh, you know, uh, nothing too crazy at this point, but watch how well he accelerates. I mean, look at this, just really blowing by everyone trying to make a play, gets a touchdown on that. That's just a superstar level play, quite frankly. So really good stuff there from neighbors, again, to be able to pull these kind of things off. And he really did it consistently. Now, I'm going to go over to a negative. Here's my biggest negative with neighbors and, and probably the one thing that you could argue holds him back from being the yeah, there's a couple other things, but it's kind of the biggest thing to hold him back from what I would say is uh, the, you know, why I wouldn't quite have him as maybe a generational prospect is something like this. So it's going to be a one-on-one matchup on the outside. Okay, hey, 
one-on-one matchup, let's throw it up to Malik Neighbors. Not a bad uh, idea. Well, so this play begins. This ball is going to be a little bit underthrown. So that's kind of worth noting. You see for Neighbors, though, well, he's in an okay position. Because the defensive back has his back completely turned towards the ball, Neighbors can play the ball, whereas the defensive back can't. However, I would say that, you know, there's two issues. One, Neighbors isn't the tallest. He's six feet tall, which you can, it's, it's not like he's you know, super short, but in NFL wide receiver terms, that's on the shorter side. But again, that that's fine. Jamar Chase is like 6'1", and we've seen what he can do in contested catches. As long as you can read the ball well, get in position well, and go up and make the, the play happen, that's not really Neighbors' game. As you see on this one, he actually kind of just stumbles over backwards and falls once he realizes he's not getting the ball there. Um, you know, again, it, it, this is one example. I don't make it, you know, any play I show you, I'm talking about more than just one example. I don't say, see one example and include it in the video. It's it's usually the other way around. I think about uh, traits that I want to talk about and then find an example of that trait. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's this is a negative in his game for sure. Now, I want to be exactly clear in what I'm saying with this last negative. I think he doesn't always do a great job at going up to get the ball. That doesn't necessarily mean he can't make contested catches. I think just a lot of times he lets the ball come to him. But he will make those catches in traffic, right? Like if there's a guy kind of on him and even like knocking his hands around as he's making the catch, he'll usually hang on. He's usually good at that stuff. It's more so when he has to find the ball and go up and get it. That's just not really his game. That's not really what he does. So, you know, I mean, listen, uh, there were times when he looked like he was uh, playing on a very low difficulty. He was playing on rookie out there uh, with some of this stuff. Absolutely. And, and my negatives aren't really that big of negatives. And one thing that's worth noting, too, is the guy's only 20. Like, that matters, right? You're going to, you know, he's not fully formed yet. Like, he's still going to fill out a little bit more in these next couple of years. And so maybe that'll help him with some of these contested catch stuff. Like, like that's definitely a very important, you know, thing. I think the one other critique I would put on him is sometimes the route running can leave a little bit to be desired. It's something you see with these young players is like, well, he hasn't had to be a route runner at all because, you know, he just runs by everybody. So why does he need to focus on routes? Well, you're going to play guys at the NFL level who can keep, keep up with you and then being a good route runner will come, come into play. But again, some guys adjust and become good route runners. Some guys don't. That's part of what makes the wide receiver draft process just so difficult. So uh, I guess, you know, kind of finally to address the question I said I would uh, answer at the beginning of this video, how do we view some someone like uh, neighbors compared to, uh, you know, Marvin Harrison Jr.? I legitimately don't think it's like a crazy hot take to say neighbors is number one. I don't think that's like a, you know, uh, it's not my take personally, spoiler alert for, you know, uh, when I do the podcast in a couple of weeks and give my rankings, I, I don't have neighbors as number one on my personal board, but I don't think it's like a crazy hot take. I think reasonable minds can differ to me personally. I'd probably say neighbors has a bit of a higher floor, but one thing I've talked about is how I usually suck at evaluating wide receivers because I focus too much on ceiling and not enough on like, you know, just what, what are you probably going to be? And I think if you look at what they're both probably going to be, I think Harrison Jr. would probably be better. But if you look at just upside, if that's what you're focused on, I don't think it's crazy to say that neighbors could be uh, better eventually because there is so much good stuff. The only other real negative I had on his game was that, like, you know, was in a great situation with a great quarterback. Uh, that factors in, of course. But you know, a lot of these guys were in good situations. So, yeah, those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And, of course, as always... Thanks for watching.